My lovely, lovely imps, we are about to react to a documentary film by the right-wing uh, advocacy group PragerU. Now, obviously, PragerU wants you to think that it's Prager University, but they're not a university. They actually don't even really like universities very much. Um, PragerU is a right-wing um, uh, propaganda outlet. And I know that opening it, opening it up by saying that PragerU is a propaganda outlet is probably going to make some people angry, but I hope that you will stick around while I substantiate exactly what I'm talking about. Um, PragerU recently paid uh, over a million dollars, and uh, this was like two or three days ago as of the recording of this uh, video, um, to uh, paid a million dollars to Twitter in order to push this video. They pushed it with a hashtag campaign called hashtag DTrans. Um, now, PragerU is no stranger to uh, talking about transgender issues, which seems very odd to me, uh, given how small the population of trans people are. Um, but nonetheless, they've talked about it many times in the past, and uh, they paid a lot of money to make sure that this video got in front of a lot of people. And additionally, um, they seem to have paid a lot of people to promote this uh, video. Um, yeah. So, being that I am not on the payroll of PragerU, I thought that it would be good for us to react to this short documentary, um, and, and talk about it. Um, maybe if it, if, if it's truthful, maybe we'll praise them. If it's untruthful, maybe we'll, uh, debunk them a little bit. I thought it would be valuable. Um, uh, but before we actually get to the reaction... Um, if you're watching this live, you've already seen, uh, this wonderful segment, but if you're watching it as a video, if you're watching this as my video segment on YouTube, you should go check out my video on detransition. I did a video on detransition, um, in which I talk about the data behind detransition and my own personal experience with detransition. Um, and I highly recommend you go check out that video when it goes live. Um, if you're watching this in the VOD, you can just rewind. If you're one of the lovely live watchers, you've already seen it. But go check that out. It's right on my channel. Just look up my channel and take a look for my detransition video. You'll find it fairly easily. Um, and uh, I recommend you go check that out because um, that was independent of this, uh, of this segment. Um, but I wanted to talk about the topic more broadly. So if you're interested in diving into the truth about detransition and not manipulative propaganda. Um, you should go check out that video. Um, anyway, let's watch Prager use detrans, the dangers of gender affirming care. That's a very strange title off the gate. Um, actually, hold on a second. I didn't realize this has a whole description. Let's, um, let's read the description. What happens when a, t a child is told she is born in the wrong body and undergoes life-altering surgery only to experience regret? Hmm. A growing number of young Americans are being manipulated by social media and pushed by medical professionals to take hormones and undergo surgery. Now many are finding the courage to detransition and warn others about their experience. Huh. Now that's a very interesting framing to start off with, right? I mean, remember when I said opening this that this was going to be propaganda and that I would demonstrate that immediately? Well, this is a propagandist approach to, um, to this topic to begin with. They're finding the courage to detransition and warn others about the experience. This is not a truth-seeking documentary. This is a documentary with a specific agenda that is trying to convince you of that agenda. It is, in short, propaganda. Now, um, that's an interesting description, and we'll see if it has any bearing on what's actually in the documentary. But without any further ado, let's do it. Let's watch the documentary. Let's watch together. Whoa! There we go. Courage. Here, boy. Come here, Courage. 
There you are. See, this is Courage, and he's going to pull me through. Okay, Courage. Okay. Pull me, Courage. Pull. Pull. You want to be... I really am sad that I took my voice for granted. Like, I didn't just take it for granted. I hated it. Like, and... Now, like, I would go, I would do anything to have that voice again. Okay, now it's your turn to teach me. Oh, yeah. What's so funny, Daisy? Come back out with me later, okay? Say hi, Mom. Our goal here is to offer gender-affirming There is a substantial body of research that shows these treatments Treatment work. Treatment for gender dysphoria is... Hey! Wait a minute! Whoa! We know who this is! Hey! Naomi! Good to see Naomi! Wow! We talked to Naomi, um, we talked to Naomi, uh, on a call-in stream once, on a creator call-in stream once. Damn. Powerful. Proven to be life-saving medical care. It really comes down to how uncomfortable with their body. Do you notice how, like, I just want to point out immediately how manipulative this is. Like, we've started out with random contextless photos of children, videos of children. I don't Can't even know if this again. is videos of this person. And the body of research we see that shows these treatments Treatment work. Treatment for gender dysphoria is proven to be life-saving medical care. We see people saying the truth. That, that there is ev hard evidence that gender-affirming care is good for the people who pursue it. And then we have a random picture of a trans birthday cake. Presumably to say what, but it's got weird spooky distortion put over it and a weird music playing in the background. Very strange, very interesting. It really comes down to how uncomfortable with their body parts. Deciding to permanently alter the bodies of children. And do they want to change those body parts? What do their doctors know? Who's there for their detransitioning? Nobody. Not children have all- Who was there for those detransitioning? Nobody. Now, I talked about this in my detransition video, but this is flatly not true. You see, um... Back in the day, before right-wing conservatives decided to try and make this a culture war talking point, the term detransitioner was pretty much only used by other trans people, and it was regularly talked about in trans communities. Trans people would support other people. Trans people would protect other people, people who were perhaps going through detransition. And what they neglect to tell you here in this video, of course, in this very manipulative opening, is of course that most people, by pure data, most people who detransition don't do so because they want to. They do so because of either explicit social pressure, financial inability, or lack of access to healthcare. That is the majority of all people who have been studied. All data that we have says that the majority of people who detransition are doing it for one of those three reasons. And you don't hear that being mentioned at all here. And that person, whoever that firebrand was shouting about detransitioners, well, what they don't know is that actually the majority of detransitioners are very, very supported by the trans community. They're strongly supported. And again, how do I know this? Well, watch my video in which I talk about my experience with detransition. Let's go. I've already been victimized by this barbaric suicide. Ridiculous. Barbaric pseudoscience. My childhood was ruined. This needs to stop. We have a serious problem. I had an alter ego, and he was like this boy that I like customized in my mind of like the ideal boy. Other girls looked so different than I did. They were, you know, expressing themselves very different. Daisy Strongin, detransitioner. Differently. Hey guys. I was depressed, hopeless, and I was feeling pretty dejected and scared and alone. I didn't like life. Like, I just wanted to stay in my room all day. As oh my God. you spiral into depression, it really feels like you're 
just the most manipulative editing. All of this is designed to provoke to provoke an imposing emotional reaction. It is, I don't know. It, it, those people who are watching my video who are mad that I called this propaganda outright, do you see what I mean? This is the all of the hallmarks of propaganda. It's highly emotionally edited. Um, it's a, a very slanted narrative. They upfront state what their what their uh, what their what their beliefs are, and they cloak it in the idea that this is going to be a a process of truth discovery. When instead, it's actually a video just meant to convince you. In a hole that is so infinitely deep, and the depression just was really debilitating in that I didn't really care about self-worth is not a real thing improving myself because I already felt Ashmar says I googled Daisy Strongin and the first article I found was Prager used million dollar detransition who detransitioner wants you to convert to Catholic Catholicism we'll get to that in just a minute we'll get to that don't you worry Mama always does her homework. Don't worry. Like I was just like I shouldn't have been born. Just having really like dark thoughts. I always just. By the way, this right here. What 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 um, Daisy is describing here is what a lot of trans people go through when they um, do not feel that their body matches who they are, and. Um, it's not just something you can get rid of. You can't just turn that off. You, that's part of the reason why gender-affirming care is so important and l saves lives. Because you can't just turn off dysphoria that makes you feel um, horrible about your own body. But also, um, there is, on the flip side of that, there is a liberation and a joy that comes from living as yourself. I wonder if Daisy's going to actually talk about that at all. It felt very much like there was just something wrong with me. And I was trying to figure it out. And I used the internet to help me do that. That's where I felt like I could diagnose. <laughs> the club music. Oh my god. This is like having like thumping club music when you go to the internet. It's like the most boomer bait ever. It's a scary. They do. They're doing drugs. They're dancing to music. You don't understand. This ain't the golden oldies. This ain't your favorite classic rock. It's thumping. It's dark. It's dark, bro. Oh man. Wow. Boomer core. Let's go. Myself. My favorite websites were YouTube and Tumblr. Hey, we're on YouTube. Shout out. I really love this whole. It's thing. such. Oh my God. Shit. Look huge amount of content notice the framing the dark lighting the 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 scary music the weird framing of this just to show her looking on tumblr and seeing random trans people like posting about being happy do you see how hard they have to try to manipulate the frame here that i consume it's tumblr it's the least scary place on the planet at that time i mean i watched a lot of trans people i watched a lot of you know gender transformation videos and saw these people really just like go from female to male visually wow like they look like men Damn. and i was like whoa i didn't even know that it was possible for a woman to pass as a man that well it's really dark when you think about it because the people who are consuming this are children wrong it's interesting that you should say that the people who are consuming this are children no actually it's lots of people it's on Tumblr. It's not children who are who are consuming this. It's anybody who has a Tumblr account, which is essentially almost anyone who has access to a computer. Millions of people on the planet can access Tumblr and go read what anybody posts. You can read about you can read the blog of a famous hot dog eating champion if you want to. You know what's really scary about this? There are children reading the hot dog eating champion's blog. Oh, oh dear God. What the hell? Like 13, 14, 15 years old. And it's so easy for them to literally be groomed. I just.
literally be groomed. Okay, so this is an interesting little thing. The the grooming thing um, is is an, a very very interesting um, uh, uh, little slang term that these people have come up with. Real quick, I just want to grab you what the um, the sort of uh, formal definition of grooming is. Sexual grooming refers to actions and behaviors used to establish an emotional connection with a minor to lower uh, and often the child's family to lower the child's inhibitions with the objective of sexual abuse. That's from Wikipedia. That's sort of the generally uh, broadest accepted term of grooming. Okay. Grooming is not when you go on Tumblr and you see posts that make you think about things. Grooming is not when um, somebody on the internet convinces you of an idea because they made an argument and it convinced you. Grooming is when somebody goes out of their way to basically uh, prep a specific victim uh, with the goal of ultimately abusing them. Grooming is a real thing and it's very dangerous. And the, um, the documentarians over at PragerU have taken part in a severe uh, dissolution, an intentional dissolution of the meaning of grooming in order to intentionally smear innocent people as dangerous, as pedophiles. Um, and they do this with the purpose to mislead and to prompt hatred because obviously people hate people who hurt children. And so how, how faster a way to prompt somebody to hate someone than to accuse them of harming children. Grooming is a very specific act that usually involves um, uh, basically a, a ch isolating a child um, uh, from their family uh, and or, as it says, getting the family more or less in on it so that you can uh, get yourself close enough to a child to prepare them to harm them. Grooming is a, a, a serious issue. Grooming is not when you go on Tumblr and you read a post of a trans person talking about their life. Grooming is not when you watch a video about a trans person talking about their transition. That is not grooming. That is not grooming in any way, shape, or form. Grooming is most commonly seen um, in uh, uh, perpetrated by figures who are already close to children and who have access to children and their families. Um, people usually in positions of powers. Uh, priests are uh, priests, teachers, coaches. These are the people who most commonly engage in behaviors of grooming. Sometimes other family members. People who basically have time where they can spend alone time with a child uh, preparing them to be abused. Basically testing the waters and, 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 and experimenting with the boundaries that a child has. This is not the same thing as finding out information on the internet. It is not the same thing as going online and reading posts. Okay? And it's frankly disgusting the way that the far right has tried to smear all, um, all, 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 all queer people with this label because uh, when what they're actually saying is I went on the internet, uh, as a teenager and I saw a post about somebody who said they were trans and I was groomed. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. And we should call it bullshit. It's misleading and disgusting. Cosmo Kitty in chat says grooming is malicious is a is a ma malicious and meticulous process of guiding you into a life where you're easy to manipulate and abuse in a number of ways. Yes. The right has deprived the word grooming of all meaning and it is causing harm to children. Yes, it unironically does. 
the fact that people think grooming is when you go on the internet and see something that you don't like or whatever, instead of what it actually is, gives actual, actually unironically gives cover to predators. But they don't care. That's the thing. That's what you need to understand about groups like PragerU. PragerU wants to manipulate you into a position. They have an agenda that they are pushing for. They don't care about who gets hurt in the process. They are seeking power. They are seeking power for their political ideology. They don't care uh, about whether or not it provides cover to, to, to predators. They don't give a shit. Let's continue. I started looking into all of it. I was like, oh, so there's gender queer, gender fluid, there's agender, there's like, you can be a demi girl, which is when you're like 90% girl, 10% not girl. Like, there's just. Wow. An, an Ooh, scary. Ooh, people thinking, wow, people thinking about gender in different ways than boy, girl. Oh my God. Oh, scary. Listen, I know that conservatives are constantly, con you know, constantly criticized for being anti-intellectual, but this really takes, takes it to a new level. The fact that they're scared of merely encountering the concept of different genders, the fact that they're playing spooky, they have spooky effects playing over the word pan-gender, like it's like the spookiest thing ever. It really, it, I get up, you know, it's like uh, for conservatives, apparently going to like a uh, genderpedia.com uh, where you can look up 900 different types of gender is like the same equivalent uh, experience as like beholding the eldritch truth in Bloodborne or like picking up the Necronomicon. They're so afraid of the idea that like, on uh, wiki.gender.com that you'll learn about the fact that some people consider themselves pansexual. That it's like, oh, they're like seeing like tentacles and eyes going out of the walls and they start hearing voices and they're rocking in the corner and going, oh, oh, I've seen it. The Eldritch Truth, the Eldritch Truth. Incredible, wonderful. Infinite amount of ways that you can interpret and express your own gender identity and your gender identity is who you are and nobody gets to take that away from you so hearing that i just became very very interested in having a male persona okay the more time so wait what's dangerous about this they've done a lot of wind up but what's dangerous about having a male persona what's dangerous about that it seems fairly common even for cis women like Cis women sometimes play a male character in D&D &D or in a video game. What's what's dangerous about this? The time I spent online, the more it felt like real life. Okay. And the more real it felt, which eventually led to me just fully transitioning. So I came out to my parents. Oh yeah, I shouldn't have brought up D&D. &D. I forgot that's the devil's game. I forgot that we've regressed. We've regressed back in time to like the early 80s when people thought that um, uh, when you went over to your friends to play D&Ds, you were actually going to a satanic coven where a demon would be inserted into your eyeball. As Ollie. And, you know, I went to this, I guess, behavioral mental health clinic for like six days. They had a meeting with my parents and they basically told my parents that if you don't validate Oliver, if you don't validate him, then this is just gonna get worse. The best. That is just blatantly, com completely correct and normal. Um, as it turns out, if you go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a mental health professional and they tell you to undercut and invalidate your child, um, they should be fired. Um, that is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to support and validate someone, especially if they're trans and they're not doing anything harmful. It's not like um, it's not like they were showing up and saying, "I've seen visions of the ancient truth. There is an octopus outside my window, and it's whispering to me." It's not like they were going there for that. They went there and, and said, "I I feel like I might be transgender. I've wanted to be a boy for years." And the doctors went, "Okay, yeah, we know what that is. Um, you guys should probably support this and not be cruel." Um, yeah, that seems like the correct answer no matter what
political bent is. I mean, I guess that's not true. I guess if your political bent is far right, you actually believe like, okay, that's the thing that goes unsaid in this is that Prager U, like Prager U generally has like a negative outlook on mental health. Like they think that like it's bad to to go to therapy that like you're you're like being a cuck liberal um so yeah i guess it's kind of case in point for these people let's continue best thing that you can do to help him is to accept him as your son but i already yeah. felt like that is what by the way uh, on one more point on this that is what all scientific evidence points towards that the most healthiest thing that you can do for someone who is experiencing gender dysphoria is to support them in expressing themselves the way that is genuine and authentic to them. That's, that's what all evidence point towards. It would be malpractice for them to do anything else. It would be malpractice for them to disobey and ignore all evidence that we have. And, and, it, and by the way, it's not a small body of evidence either. There's an extensive body of evidence. Every single pro, uh, professional psychiatric association in the world um, agrees with, the, 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 with this fact. This is not a controversial fact at all. It's not an under-researched fact. It, it's some people experience gender dysphoria. Trans people exist. Some people have been assigned a gender at birth and they are expected to behave a certain way, and they are not happy be being forced to behave that way, and you shouldn't force them to behave that way. Some people want to be different than they were born and told to be, and that's okay. As it turns out, that's totally okay. I wasn't what my mom had expected, and for me, transitioning... Can we listen to that again? For me, like, I wasn't then, this is just gonna get worse. The best thing that you can do to help him is to accept him as your son. But I already felt like I wasn't what my mom had expected. Oh no. Oh no. And for me, transitioning was the closest I could come to killing- Isn't that literally what I just said? That like, parents trying to force their children to be a certain way is often unhealthy and some kids are not gonna be okay with it and that's fine. You shouldn't force your children to be a certain way. And then she goes and says, I already had the feeling that I wasn't what my mom expected. Her mom was expecting her to be a certain way and she didn't want to be that way. Well, as it turns out, parents don't control the every aspect of their children. They shouldn't. Children are independent people. They're living beings. They have their own way of living and their own needs. ...myself without actually doing it. With all of these mental struggles that I was having, not knowing how to make sense of it on my own, and consuming so much of the trans narrative and just loving life hearing people i'm loving life yeah consuming the trans narrative okay this is the part where it actually becomes like the conservative like fear of like cognito hazards starts to show um if you are so weak of mind and spirit that seeing a video of a trans person on the internet saying i'm loving life is enough to like completely unseal who you are and unravel you um might i suggest that that's a you problem the entire world is full of billions of people doing their own things speaking their own minds sharing their own experiences if maybe if you see a video of a trans guy saying i am happy and loving life and you go oh god i wish that were me maybe you're trans and if you're not that's kind of a you problem. People should be able to make a video of themselves on the internet saying, I'm happy and I'm doing good. Here's me. Hey, everybody. You should be able to do that and not be treated like you're some sinister agent. Look at this. This is some completely random trans guy. And 
and and this documentary is framing this random trans guy living his life as a like a narr a sinister narrative. What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with you people? What the fuck is wrong with far right people? Isn't that it it's so oh man, this is so telling. This section right here is so telling of this entire thing where it is their obsession and preoccupation with other people and they make it everyone else's problem. They're obsessed with this person just living his own life, doing his own thing, but no, it's a narrative, a sinister narrative out to get you. Do they do this to every single person who posts on social media? Every time some random wine mom takes a picture with her friends at the movie theater and goes, just saw Leo DiCaprio in, in Killers of the Flower Moon, hashtag Martin Scorsese, hashtag wine. Do they go, this is the narrative. It's the, look it, you're being sucked in by the go to the movies with your friends with the wine mom narrative. No, they fucking, okay, some of them do. Actually, okay, some of them do. Actually, what, what am I saying? Of course they do. They, conservative, far, far right conservatives are the biggest busybodies in the world. They love to obsess over this. So what, whatever, they do it. They're right. I, they're right. They do. They actually do think that uh, random women posting pictures of themselves with their friends on social media is the end of Western civilization. Why do I even bother? Oh my God. For me, transitioning was the closest I could come to killing myself without actually doing it. What? You're alive. What do you mean? That sounds like, that sounds like you wanted to be yourself, but you, but th th you're framing suicide as the, 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 as like being honest. So did I, do I commit suicide? Did I commit suicide? when I change my shirt after stream, because when I want to change into something more comfortable, it's the closest thing I can get to killing myself because I'm no longer the me that was wearing this shirt from stream because I've changed into my PJs after stream. It's like the same logic, this insane logic of like, oh, well, I wanted to change myself. And so it was the closest thing I could get to killing. I guess you didn't, I, I don't know, like wh what? That's deranged. That is, that is deranged. With all of these, like, him, I'm it sorry, already felt like it wasn't what my mom had expected. And for me, transitioning was the closest I could come to killing myself without actually doing it. That's the closest you could come to killing yourself without actually doing it? Listen, look, I'm going to be completely honest. I've met a lot of people in my life who have come very close to killing themselves without actually doing it. And usually it involved excessive amounts of drugs, excessive amount of hard drugs like heroin. Okay. Not changing your pronouns from she, her to he, him, please. This is so, this is so ridiculous. With all of these mental struggles that I was having, not knowing how to make sense of it on my own and consuming so much of the trans narrative and just love and life hearing people say this made me so much happier did okay i've seen people joking that prager you might have accidentally done pro trans propaganda and i don't agree with that entirely but when they have this when they have the detransitioner come on to say that I've seen millions of people on the internet saying that they were happy, but I personally wasn't happy. That kind of seems to like communicate the opposite of what they're trying to say. It seems like there's a lot of people on the internet who are really happy. I am really happy with transition. And you know what? I feel like this is like, um, I feel like this is the, the time uh, for us to look at, at something else real quick, because I feel like this is relevant. Okay. This is the Twitter account of the, of, of Daisy, the person that we're watching in the documentary, Daisy Strongin. I don't want people to think that just because I've detransitioned and chosen a more traditional path that I am now cured. I still deal with self-loathing. This was as of September 23rd of this year. So after this documentary was already being produced, I'm still sick of being me. I'm still depressed. I'm still a miserable, wretched sinner. 
The mental ailments that led me to transition still plague me today. I still fantasize about being a guy at least a few times a week. I'm often a guy in my dreams, but now I know that I can't indulge those fantasies. I have to be the best mother slash wife that I can be. Jesus Christ is my only hope. He is your only hope, too. I still fantasize about being a guy at least a few times a week. I'm often a guy in my dreams. A lot of people out there, a lot, a lot, a lot of people out there, transition and are happy. It's not sinful. It sounds to me like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. That the ideology that you subscribe to, Christianity, the particular brand of Christianity that you subscribe to has told you that you are evil for being a man. That you are somehow evil for wanting to be true to yourself. And as a result, you now r aggressively repress a part of you that won't go away. A part of you that is truthful. You are lying to yourself. And worse lying to God on behalf of men, on behalf of humanity, because some priest or some guy at PragerU told you that uh, you're a sinner for being true to yourself. And, and so now you repress your desire to be a man the way God created you? It's, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's also sickening. Oh no. Oh, that's so sad. There's so much of this. It keeps going, by the way. There's like many of these. Oh, look at this. Here you go. Here's more of this. For the record, the PragerU documentary focuses mainly on the transgender medicalization of minors. I didn't say this in the feature, but I do not think there is a single person, whether they're eight, eight years old or 80, who should medically transition. Also, everyone should become Catholic. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. It sure sounds like this detransition has brought in a lot of happiness into this person's life, except it actually hasn't. It actually sounds like they are um, as miserable, if not more miserable than before. And it seems like the recurring issue throughout this entire documentary has actually been the fact that, um, that they don't feel like they can be a man, even though they can. But hey, everybody should be a Catholic, right? No religious, no religious trauma going on here. No ideology. It's incredible, by the way. It's incredible to me that that someone would appear in a documentary talking about trans ideology when they belong to the Catholic Church and believe that everyone should become Catholic. Do you not recognize how, like, like how much? cognitive dissonance you must be ignoring in order to come to that position that somehow apparently trans ideology is perpetrating itself through the world via you going on tumblr and reading posts but converting people to catholicism one of the most aggressively um evangelical religions in the history of the world a religion that repeatedly throughout history converted other people at the point of a sword and, oh yeah, but, but it's trans ideology is the problem, right? It's definitely not that Catholic ideology. It's definitely not that hyper-repressive Catholicism. My God. My God. The part that made me cry was the Twitter thread where they talked about how they can't transition back because they'd lose their husband and kid. Hostage situation. That's what we call a hostage situation, okay?
My god. This alleviated my pain. I wanted to alleviate my pain. I also didn't want to be who I was. So... I didn't want to be who I was. That's such a weird framing, right? Okay, let me ask you this. Is a person their nose? That might seem like an odd question, but I want you to think about it. Is a person their nose? If somebody gets an injury and loses their nose, do they stop being who they were? Are they no longer themselves? Or is a nose just a piece of the broader whole? This framing is so strange and I see it. Um, they, it's never interrogated. And partially it's because none of this really cares about asking these questions. Um, none of these documentaries ever actually care to talk about this because they're trying to manipulate you into hating trans people. This documentary is designed to make you scared of and hateful towards trans people. But it's weird for her to say, um, I, I didn't want to be who I really was. Well, it seems to me, especially given the fact that we just looked at her now saying, I still think about how badly I want to be a guy. I still feel like I'm a guy all the time. I cannot get rid of it. It seems to me like the more permanent part is her masculine identity is more permanent than her physical femininity. And it seems to me like it might be important to recognize that fact. Like it might be healthy to recognize that fact to recognize that who we are is more than who we are at the moment. Do you stop being who you are because you grow up? Like, are we supposed to be like a, 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 a fetus forever? No, we grow and we change. Our physical appearance is a shell for the self. And of course, our minds and our being is not completely separable. From, I'm not a dualist. I don't believe there's like a soul particle, you know, inhabiting inside of us or whatever. Um, but the fact of the matter is that no individual part of us is us. Um, we are a greater whole. And sometimes changes happen to us and we still remain. If I lose my arm in an accident tomorrow, I hope that doesn't happen. But if I lose my arm in an accident tomorrow, I will still be me. There might be new challenges and, and, and changes that I have to make to my life, but I will still be me. And the same applies uh, if you decide to transition. You are changing pieces of your body, but you are still you. It's such a strange, strange approach. With transitioning, I could do both of those things. I could alleviate my pain and I can become someone else. I wanted to escape. No, you will become you, genuinely you, not someone else, yourself. Escape my own identity as Daisy. My name is Ali Chadra, and this is my voice one day before testosterone. Also, that's another thing. Why? Isn't it strange? I, I don't want to harp on this too much, but isn't it strange to fixate on the given name? L I... I'm, I'm me. I'm Daisy. Why? Because your parents named you that? Like what kind of, what kind of a basis for identity is that? If you find strength in that, that's fine. It is fine to have strength in a given name, but why would that be the defining feature? Why would you be bound by that? That makes no sense to me. So because somebody else decided to name you something, you are now locked into that identity forever? This... It's, it's funny, people got mad at me for drawing comparisons between pronouns and names. Um, between, like, the, not just pronouns, between gender identity and names. That, like, uh, but I really think there's a lot of comparisons to be made here. Um, people change their names constantly, not even legally, throughout your life. How many people in chat, in fact, how many people watching, I just want you to think about this, how many different nicknames have you gone by in your life? You've probably gone by a me but through many. I've been known by many names in my life. 
Most of them were not my given name. Almost nobody in my entire life ever, even before transition, called me by my given name. It was always a nickname. Always. Even my parents. And then there's online names, all of this. Why, what is this? This is such a strange worldview. It's such a strange and parental centric worldview. I don't want to get off topic, but let me just say that PragerU has a huge obsession with a parental centric worldview, a really, really strong one. In fact, uh, a YouTuber by the name of Zoe B who I really, really like, recently did a uh, documentary on the parents' rights movement, of which PragerU is a big part. Um, and the parents' rights movement is very much about parental control. It's very parent-centric, and it's very strange. Let's continue. Let's continue. That was really the beginning. I wasn't just playing around anymore. Everybody says Minecraft song. It's not the Minecraft song. It's Eric Satie. Gymnopedie number one, right? I think it's Gymnopedie number one. And it is in Minecraft, but that's because Eric Satie's music is public domain because he was around in the 1800s. You want to know what else? It's also in Pathologic. Not this song, it's uh, the one in Pathologic is, um, hold on, it's the other one. The Gnossine, number three. Hold on, watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trigger the Pathologic fans, ready? Get your scalpels out. Pulling out a rusty, a rusty revolver. All right, enough goofing. We gotta, we gotta, we got a very serious documentary to watch here, okay? No more goofing about pathologic. Let's get back into it. I wasn't just playing dress up anymore. Like I was actually going to become a trans man and live my life that way. Massive trigger warning. I was warned about this part and I saw this segment. Uh, I saw this section in advance. So, uh, massive trigger warning incoming. Culturally, we are Mexican and men have to be very masculine in our culture and I wasn't the most masculine growing up, and I think that had a part on everything that eventually led me to do what I did. It was around middle school. I was surfing YouTube one day, and a video popped up, male to female, and that eventually planted the seeds of doubt. It allowed me to be caught by the ideology that... It allowed me to be caught by the ide ideology? Seeing a single video on YouTube apparently is so powerful. A single transition video on YouTube is so powerful that that act alone um, trapped you in the ideology. It's, it's crazy. If you take these people at their word, then trans people are our are, are God, okay? We are more powerful than God in these people's minds. All you have to do is watch a single trans video and bam, you're done. You're done for. That was it. That's all that you needed. Of course, I joke a little bit, but the truth is the reason why they push this narrative is has an obvious conclusion. If you think about it, if trans people are so dangerous, such a powerful contaminant that even seeing them can turn your kids trans, well, then the only answer is to get rid of trans people. Because if they're powerful enough to transform you from a single YouTube video, do you see where it goes? Do you see where this logic follows? It's obvious uh, if you take just a moment and think about the conclusions that, that, that it leads to. If they believe that 
that simply seeing trans people living their lives is dangerous. Well, then you can't have trans people living their lives. You can't, it can't be allowed because it's dangerous. It's a moral panic. It's made to instill fear and hatred with the goal of driving trans people out of public existence, drive trans people out of existence. That is the goal of this. Eventually led me to hurt myself. Eventually, I just wanted an answer to be given to me on who I was and I went to see a therapist and I had only asked, I think I might be trans, I don't know, I want to know. The therapist immediately on my first appointment with her said, yes, I am a transgender woman. She had my letter to transition the same appointment. Sorry, I need to hear what they said there for a second. Want to know. The therapist immediately on my first appointment with her said, yes, I am a transgender woman. She had my letter to transition the same appointment. After had my letter to transition. This okay, so first of all, if you go to a therapist and your entire session is you talking about how agonized you are about your gender identity to the degree that you know that you want to become a woman, that's pretty rational for that therapist to go, it sounds like you're probably a transgender woman. Let me get you a letter so you can go talk to somebody else about this. That sounds completely reasonable. Even on a first appointment, if you go in on a first appointment with a therapist and you and Keep in mind that therapists have to decide on the spot, like whether they can handle what you're working with or not. Um, if you go in and you and you walk into your therapist and you go, I am having severe hallucinations. There is a scary man following me everywhere that I go. He's in the corner of every single room. He has a scary face and he keeps whispering to me. But every time I ask people about him, he's not there. They go and they go, Wow, it sounds like you might be suffering from schizophrenic hallucinations. I'm going to write you a letter to go talk to an expert about schizophrenia. Why does this why is this framed like it's a scary or bad thing? That's just what they're supposed to do. Now, of course, there's some misleading language here. When you hear the I got my letter to transition, what does that mean? Does that mean that you got a letter that says that you talked to a therapist and that the therapist thinks that you're expressing gender dysphoria? What does that actually mean? Of course, we don't get to find. We won't get to find out. After that, I just took everything slowly. After that, I took everything slowly. Wait a minute! Hold on a second! Wait! That's they undermined their own narrative again. After after that, I took everything slowly. I thought this was about getting enraptured and pulled in and, and, and forced into transition. What do you mean you took it slowly? You forgot you went off script. Dude, you went off script. Here's a good point. Malevolent Snow says, my therapist straight up said that if my eating habits required further therapy, she would refer to me to somebody else because she doesn't handle eating disorders very often. Again, this documentary is just highly manipulative, extremely manipulative. It's a perfectly good point, what you said there, Malevolent Snow. But eventually my father found out what I was doing. And due to our culture, he was not happy. And... My father found out what I was doing, and due to our culture, he was not happy. He took me to Mexico and had me have sexual relationship against my will with a prostitute. That, there it is. That's the part that I was warning you all about. I'm actually kind of amazed that PragerU would put this um, into their documentary. That they would leave that part in. Familial abuse. This person was abused because they're trans. Their father found out they were trans and forced them to have sex against their will. They are experiencing trans-based abuse and hatred.
I was a 19 year old kid and my father told the prostitute take good care of him it's his first time that is so fucked up it is so fucked up and and to believe to believe that we started this segment out with this person trying to blame transgender ideology when it is so blatantly the ideology of the father that is at fault here the disgusting behaviors of the father and his ideology. He was trying to prove that. I and also the idea that it was because of culture, because of our culture. I don't think that that's an accurate. Uh, I also do think that that's not an accurate way. Of um, it is true that like American culture, um, American culture has a lot of um, encourages certain ways of thinking, but it's not universal and people don't act solely because of culture. And there are plenty of Mexicans uh, who do not engage in this type of behavior. There are plenty of Mexican men who do not believe that this is the right way to act. But let's continue. I was a man. That broke me, obviously. After that, I go back to the therapist and told her I wanted to transition. And so you went to the therapist, you got approval, you took it slow. Your dad found out, abused you, and then you went back to the therapist and decided that you wanted to transition. How does this look bad for gender ideology? How does this look bad for the therapist? The only villain in this is the abusive father who couldn't accept his trans child. And somehow PragerU is trying to pin this on trans people. She recommended I start my social and medical intervention as soon as I can. Social and medical intervention? There's no such thing as so... Well, I don't know. 11 months after I had started hormones, I was transferred to another medical professional who, after speaking with him for one time only, he I was on, this, you were on hormones for almost a year. So went to a therapy session, took it very slowly, went back later after some time had passed, decided to um, decided to get your letter and continue to transition, began social transition, went on to hormones for 11 months, and then you're shocked when a doctor says, yeah, I'd be willing to give you a surgery that you want. You're an adult and you made the decision and you have multiple medical professionals who you talk to over a long period of time. This is, this is the opposite of the message that PragerU put in their description. This is actually showing that it took a very long time, presumably almost two years from the beginning of interest with medical professionals the entire way. Medical professionals were making this process go at a normal pace. There wasn't any speeding or hurrying up or encouragement. What the hell? He will approve me for surgery. Why is my audio so low? It's just this video is kind of loud. I'm sorry about that. I do apologize if the audio balance isn't perfect. It's very, it's been very difficult to control the balance of this uh, video because in their video, their talking audio is lower than the music. And anyway. And a few weeks after that session, I got two letters from my insurance proving me for surgery. But I was a little surprised that I received my letter for bottom surgery, which was removal of my genitals without even asking. I don't know what that, I don't know what that even means. Were they trying to say that, um, were they, were they, are they trying to imply that his genitals were removed without asking because that's not what happened. What he said was that he also got a letter that said he could get that if he wanted to. As an adult who had been in treatment for well over a year, this is not the shock story that they think it is, but they certainly played some spooky music. 
You want to know what the shock story is? The shock story is the abusive father abusing his child because they're trans. My name is Ali Chadra. This is my voice pre-T. My name is Ali Chadra, and this is my voice one month on T. Two days ago was my official three months on testosterone. This is my voice four months on T. It's probably not really a good thing that I was able to get my hormones so easily. I mean, anyone can go in there. We don't even get to hear about the process. And also, obviously anybody can go in there. Obviously? Like, what are you, what are you supposed to do? Like, like, you have to say a secret password and only the chosen get to go in? It's a, medi like, yeah, you go to the doctor and you tell them what's wrong. What? What the fuck is up with, th this documentary is insane. Not only did they send me home with the hormones, but I actually did my very first shot right there in the doctor's office. Yes, they do that. The reason why they give you your first shot in the doctor's office is so that they can teach you how to correctly inject without hurting yourself. That's like the most obvious thing in the world and any person who's ever had to take any injectable medicine, any whatsoever, will have had this experience. Oh no, um, I, had to, I had to get insulin for my diabetes and I went in there and the first time they literally injected it right into me. Yeah, that's what they do, that's what nurses do. The nurse's job is to teach you to safely inject the medicine that you need to take. In your case, it was testosterone. My God. And I was just euphoric and it was real and I was actually going to start seeing changes. The first moment that we have ever seen this person, Daisy, happy is when they get to transition. We have seen Daisy during the documentary, after the documentary, after detransitioning, miserable, miserable, miserable. The only time they've been happy is when they transition. Don't you feel like that maybe says something? Maybe the, maybe the whole particular in, you know, version of Catholicism that tells you that you're evil for being trans might be the problem here and not the fact that you're trans. Maybe, just maybe. And I was going to start passing, which basically meant that Everyone around me was going to see me as a boy, an actual boy. Okay, also, I have to say this. Why is this Xander Hall? Why? I'm, I know I'm not the only one, but why is she Xander Hall? She has, she looks so much like Xan, but also she has the same speech, speech patterns and facial expressions that Xander Hall does when he talks. Have we all been a victim to a PSYOP and is this actually Xander Hall in a disguise getting massive bucks from PragerU for doing propaganda? Anyway, let's continue. This feels good. This makes me happy. I'm actually feeling the feelings that... Oh, the pain! The pain! The pain knowing where this goes. Oh my God. Oh. You know, all those like trans people online were saying that they felt. I just want to say that I'm literally so happy with my chest. It's so much better than I thought it would be. Awesome. Seemingly out of nowhere, we've suddenly seen a huge spike in... Left-handedness? Were you going to say left-handedness? This is my favorite one, okay? Ah, yes, it's so incredible. Ah, oh, this is so perfect. This is my favorite thing that trans people, that uh, transphobes try to push. Trans, anti-trans pe people try to, try to push this shit. And, so, and people have done switcheroos with this graph. The rate of left-handedness among Americans by year of birth. 1900s, 1800s, early 1900s, all the way up. Oh my God, we've had an explosion in left-handedness. And of course, the reason for this is that around the 19, 
uh, the early 1900s was when people stopped believing that left-handedness was a sign that you were inferior or that it was evil. It was around the time when they stopped punishing people for being left-handed and forcing left-handed people to write right-handed. And all, all of a sudden, people are more willing to admit that they're left-handed. Wow. I wonder if there could be anything similar going on. I wonder if uh, the fact that it was it was a horrible experience to be trans uh, until very, very recently, and even still often is because of the way people treat you, specifically because of the way people treat you. But the transness was so stigmatized before that people just wouldn't tell you. They would lie and live in secret. I wonder if that could be a part of it. Media anyway, depictions but... and social media depictions of transgenderism. It's even reached the mainstream advertising wow. world. This month, I and I think this is all coming to a head and what this... Oh my God, they did it. The they did it. Look who it advertising is. World. This... Dylan Mulvaney and the Bud Light. They are so obsessed. Dylan Mulvaney got six cans of Bud Light. One six pack of Bud Light with her face on it as a commemorative can and they've lost their minds for months. They're still mad. You cannot tell me this isn't insanity, okay? I don't, I don't care if you are, if I know that no right winger or, or, you know, anti-trans person is still watching this because they don't have the mental fortitude to continue watching anything that features trans people talk, t telling the truth at all. But, you cannot tell me that the obsession with Dylan Mulvaney is anything other than insanity. If you are out there, I really want you to like think about it and recognize how insane the obsession with Dylan Mulvaney is, how broken the right wing movement is right now that they are still obsessing over this. That right now in fucking November of 2023, they are still mad that at the beginning of 2023, a random trans person got a set of commemorative cans. Broken, mentally broken people, mentally broken people. And I think this is all coming to a head and what this really means for our society. In cases like the case of Layla Jane, a young girl whose breasts were removed at age 13 by doctors who fed her a lie. Take this next case. Layla Jane was born a girl. She Layla Jane experienced a host of medical issues in her youth. Her mother, who is bipolar, expressed to these uh, physicians and therapists that her daughter might. This is her lawyer, by the way. So just recognize that we are, uh, we are, this is also a lawyer for the Trump team. Um, I looked her up and, uh, and yeah, she's a lawyer for the Trump team as well. But she, this is the, this is the lawyer for this person. Just recognize we are, uh, we're getting a bit of a biased, a biased perspective here. I want, I really want to know what the facts of the case really are, um, because uh, I would love to see what evidence they have that doctors were like pressuring her into getting a mastectomy. I would, I would just really love to see that. It's possible. By the way, I should be clear: there are bad doctors out there. But just because there's a bad doctor or just because a bad incident happens doesn't mean that you can demonize an entire uh, community. It's just how it goes. Be bipolar, but she actually never received any diagnosis or treatment for that. The family went to... Well, wait a minute. Bipolar. Hold on, can we listen to that again? ...of transgenderism. It's even reached the mainstream advertising world this month, I and i think this is all coming to a head and what this really means for our society in cases like the case of layla jane a young girl whose breasts were removed at age 13 by doctors who fed her a lie take this next case layla jane was born a girl she layla jane experienced a host of medical issues in her youth her mother who is bipolar expressed to these uh, physicians and therapists that her daughter might be bipolar but she actually never received any diagnosis or well wait a minute that doesn't that's that doesn't track so you suggest to the to your to one of your doctors that your daughter might be bipolar because you're bipolar and just because they don't diagnose it that way that doesn't mean that she was actually bipolar maybe they we don't even know did they did did they do a test undiagnosed and untreated bipolar disorder so how do they know she has it if she's undiagnosed and untreated? Did they just 
refuse. I don't know. This sounds like this sounds like there's so much so much missing information here. Whatever. Let's that, continue. Family. We can't fixate on this. This is obvious. Like at this point, we've reached the point of just obvious. Uh, manipulation in this message as if the first two parts weren't bad enough this is just ridiculous having on a trump team lawyer to talk about some uh case that we're not actually given any context for we don't even know what the truth is we went to one physician who after less than a two-hour appointment green lighted the hormone therapy and in a similarly or even shorter period of time a plastic surgeon signed off after one visit on remote a similar I don't trust this person at all I'm sorry I don't trust this person at all moving her breasts like most young it. women who I don't believe it I'm just calling bullshit first of all maybe it did happen it is it is technically possible that there's like some psycho uh doctor out there who who just is like I'm super excited to cut people up like you know you got like Hannibal Lecter as a doctor I I know for sure there are psycho doctors out there they definitely exist but um this is this does not sound like something that even happens on the planet Earth. Uh, first of all, I've been through the process of transition and getting surgery is a fucking nightmare. OK, not only can you never get greenlit for anything ever in one go in most and I'm not even kidding you, the biggest insurance uh, providers in the country require that you get psych analyses, get multiple psych analyses before you even get surgery. An adult, for an elective, for a elective surgery, it's categorized as elective, even though every medical professional in the world acknowledges that gender affirming surgery is incredibly, incredibly medically important for trans people. They consider an elective surgery and you, even though you can walk, if you're cis, you can walk into a plastic surgeon and you can get breast implants in one day, no questions asked. If you want to do it as a trans person, you got to get psychiatric evaluation. Mo like, when I, I had an orchiectomy, which is the removal of the testicles. I had that because I thought it was very important for me and I stand by that. Um, and in order to do that, I had to get two psyche valves in order to even begin the process. So I just, I don't know about this. I don't know if this is real. Go down this path of- Maybe, maybe they had Hannibal Lecter, Dr. Lecter as their, uh, as their, their guy. And they also had a, had the most permissive insurance company in the world, but I don't know, I'm sussing it. Identifying transgenderism as the solution to their problems, reinforced by irresponsible medical care providers. It's likely that if physicians had properly diagnosed all of the issues present in Layla Jane as a child, she would never have gone down this path. When parents of trans-identified kids are referred to specialized gender clinics, they're often told that they're going to get comprehensive, multidisciplinary mental health assessments. We know that that's not true. In practice, these kids were put on a fast track to medical transition. No, that is an outright lie. That, what that guy is saying right there is an outright lie. In fact, it's funny that they show, that they show this guy here from earlier because this guy explicitly stated that he wasn't fast-tracked. He said that he took it slow and that it took over a year for him to even get to surgery. So this guy is just blatantly lying. We just confirmed them in real time lying in their own documentary, contradicting the text of their own documentary. Layla is now 18 and is fighting back. So this does not happen to anyone else. My name is Prisha Mosley. I was a 15 year old girl when the trans community found me already diagnosed. When the trans community found me, what does that even mean? What, what the fuck? This is, we've reached the derangement level of this documentary. With multiple mental illnesses, including anorexia, a body dysmorphic disorder, and borderline personality disorder. And? Oh, oh, I forgot. You can't have one thing while having another thing. I had to get surgery for the cyst on my uvula. And they didn't even know before they did surgery that I had depression and seasonal affective disorder. What the fuck is this? What are, what are we at? Where are we at with this?
Where are we at with this? Trauma disorder, I was easy to manipulate and convince that I had been born in the wrong body. I was told that this was the reason for all of my mental and emotional distress. The gender specialist I was taken to, taken to see, told my parents that I need to be put on puberty blocking drugs right away. They asked my parents a simple question. Good. Good. That's actually good, okay? Unironically, I'm not even joking. If you have, if you get to the point where you have dysphoria severe enough that you go to the doctor about it and they say, we think you should go on puberty blockers, that's good. Puberty blockers are incredibly, incredibly minor effective drugs. They do not have a severe effect on the, on the body long term. They simply delay puberty. They've been in use for a very long time. The majority of people who receive puberty blockers are cis people with precocious puberty. And guess what? It's been studied in them extensively. And it's just fine. The long-term risks of, of puberty blockers are incredibly low. It's actually a very good path to say, you have severe gender dysphoria. We should try, we should put you on puberty blockers to make sure that puberty doesn't start and potentially worsen your dysphoria. And the reason for that is that puberty is notoriously traumatic for people who have gender dysphoria. If you have gender dysphoria and the idea of say you're, uh, you know, you're, uh, uh, assigned male at birth, but you're pre puberty. And the idea of going through a male puberty terrifies you and torments you like it did for me, then being able to have puberty blockers that could stop that and allow you time to make decisions about your life and talk to a therapist is a very good thing. It's that simple. This is fear mongering. This is blatant and unquestionable fear mongering. Would you rather have a dead daughter or a living transgender son? This is the moment that we all became victims of so-called gender affirming care. But is this the document we're talking about? You needed this letter signed by a therapist to open up the door for you to, to get these medical treatment. Is, is this the document that we're talking about earlier? Yes, it okay. is. And it took you how long to get this? Oh, uh, 30 minutes. The ideology that has become dominant at these clinics. Okay. So as an adult, you go to your therapist and you say, hi, I am very interested in pursuing gender transition. And then they go, okay, you know what gender transition entails, right? And then you go, yes. And they go, okay, here's a letter that will refer you to a gender transition clinic. And then you go to the gender transition clinic where they talk to you about the risks and potential benefits of gender transition. This is literally, they're trying to make spooky every single little thing that happens even when there's nothing happening other than absolutely normal medical procedure. You go to one doctor, you tell them your issue, they write you a letter of referral. I could go to my doctor tomorrow and get a letter of referral to a gastroenterologist in 10 minutes. I would say, ow, ow, my tummy hurts really bad and it won't stop. Can you please write me a letter to the gastroenterologist? And they would go, okay, actually, to be completely honest, they would go, uh, can we try this medicine first? But whatever. That's because it's gastroenterologists are expensive and insurance would decline me. But wait, actually, no, I've literally been to the gastroenterologist already. So I actually could, I could probably get a letter for a fucking MRI if I complained enough. Come on, this is fucking stupid. Is that trans kids know who they are and therefore to question them, to ask basic therapeutic questions like, could your gender dysphoria or gender identity have been so ridiculous to try and fear monger the process of getting a referral letter to another doctor? What a stupid thing to try and fear monger. Triggered by some other event in your life. Basic questions of screening are completely taboo in these circles. But the truth is that parents- Wrong. Completely incorrect. Basic questions of screening. All you get is screened as a trans person. All you fucking get is invasively screened. That's the your entire life. From the moment you become trans, you, you all you get is screened. Endless screenings, endless questions, endless interrogations. That's it. This guy is so full of shit. He, he's so full of shit. Not only do the facts completely disprove him, if you go and try this for your fucking self, you will not have this experience. This guy's full of shit. Parents don't have much guy. of a choice in the matter. I'm sorry, this guy is ridiculous. And doc 
The guy that made the 30 minutes claim isn't trans. He was a Daily Wire. He was a Daily Wire employee who who went who called a gender clinic pretending to be trans to get an appointment. Oh, incredible. That's fucking incredible. Doctors are telling parents in front of their distressed children, if you don't consent to the use of puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones, your child is going to die by suicide. That is not what they say. No doctor says that. That is not what doctors say. They don't do that. They, they just don't. Doctors don't do that. They say that the risk will increase because that's scientific medical fact. And if they didn't do that, they wouldn't be doing their jobs. They would be committing malpractice. If you deny a trans kid the ability to self-express, the ability to get access to the medical care they need, their risk of suicide does go up. But there is no doctor on the... I. There is no doctor in the entirety of the United States who just goes, your kid's going to die if you don't let me give him this, this medicine. <laughs> I can't wait to give this medicine to your kid. That's just, where have you ever met a mustache twirling doctor that sits there and goes, it's either the medicine or the kid. <laughs> so stupid. This is pathetic. I believe that most doctors who practice gender-affirming medicine, their gender dysphoria they genuinely, good. sincerely believe that they're doing good, but they're not. Finland. You are a liar and the entirety of the medical community disagrees with you. This guy, by the way, that guy who's been talking is a right-wing think tank employee. He is a fellow at the Manhattan Institute. He is a professional right-wing uh, thinker. That's his job. His job is to push an agenda. His entire job. That's who, the, that's who we were just engaging with. Who are you going to trust? The conservative political provocateur, professional conservative propagandist, or medical consensus from across the globe? Sweden, France, Norway, and the UK are reversing course and asking questions. Have all not found enough medical evidence, psychological evidence, to support transgender therapy. In the UK, flatly false. K, their only national gender clinic for children shut down last year by court order. What do their doctors know that our doctors don't? Part of the problem is that the current cohort of teenagers that are being transitioned under the affirmative protocol, which lacks guardrails, which takes kids at their word when they say I'm trans, which doesn't do proper mental health assessments. In fact, do you see what they're advocating for? They are advocating for invasive psycho uh, psychoanalysis being done to every kid who says, I am having gender dysphoria. Kids who know what they're experiencing and responsibly tell their doctors about it, they are asking people to dehumanize those children and subject them to unnecessary psychoanal uh, psychoanalysis, which can be very traumatic, by the way. Instead of just saying, wait a minute, Maybe this kid is being truthful about the thing that they're talking about, because why wouldn't they? Um, let's, do, let's treat them as if they're not a liar. They want to treat every single kid. Oh, sorry, sorry, not every single kid. Every single trans kid. Isn't it interesting that they're not talking about this about any other medical procedure? They're not talking about this about any issue that a cis person might handle. Just trans people. They want to subject the trans kids specifically to being tr uh, treated as if they're liars, to being treated as if they're deceiving everyone, to be uh, overly analyzed, poked and prodded, questioned until the end. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And these are political provocateurs trying to intervene in the medical field. They are trying to decide how medicine and science is done. They are, in, they are using their ideology to try and warp the treatment that people have access to. Double mastectomies on teenage girls went up 13-fold between 2013 and 2020. Between 2000 and... Okay. That doesn't mean anything. In 16 and 2019 alone, these procedures went up by 500%. A study published in 2022 by researchers who are yeah from what to what those numbers are meaningless meaningless in a vacuum advocates of gender affirming surgeries showed that the youngest patient to have received a radical bilateral mastectomy in the united states is 12 years old wait a minute 
was that patient even trans? Was that patient even trans? Was that patient even trans? Old. These kids are going to grow up and they're going to start to feel the full effects of their medical decisions. They're going to start to feel the side effects. If you really want to know whether the study says that that was the age of referral, not the age of actual of actually uh, attaining the mastectomy. Interesting. Interesting. Almost like these guys have serially lied throughout the entirety of this so-called documentary, aka this propaganda piece. And again, let me just remind you, the express purpose of this documentary is to drive hatred, distrust, fear, and sti and uh, and a stigma against trans people. This is to make trans people uh, seem sinister, bad, and dangerous. That is the purpose of this documentary. It's not to help detransitioners. It's not to let the stories of detransitioners be heard. It's to damage and attack trans people as a part of, of Prager U's culture war. Amputating the breasts of a 12 or 13 year old girl is ultimately in her best long-term interests. Ask her when she's 30 or 40 and unable to breastfeed her own child. What am I supposed to be getting from this? Is this supposed to be spooky? This person is happy. I would go out into the world and everyone's calling me Ollie. Everyone sees me as a guy. But then at the end of the day, when I'm home in my room, looking in the mirror, I'm like, What did I do? Like, I start getting these, like, really scary thoughts of, like, you're incomplete. You're not a guy. Was that Daisy? Was that Daisy being excited about getting a mastectomy? This is just, this is Christian guilt. Again, I point you back to what we looked at earlier. Daisy admits, as of literally, like, a couple of months ago, two months, less than two months ago, Daisy admitted that they still think about it almost every single day, that they dream, their dreams, their subconscious sees themselves as a, as a man, as a boy, not as a woman. There is something, there is a, a internal war going on that has nothing to do with gender ideology. The ideology at play is whether or not uh, uh, Daisy can accept themselves for who they are as a trans person at, without considering themselves like a flawed sinner. Die. You never will be. But even though you're legally, you know, your driver's license says you're a guy, you know you're not. You speak for yourself. This is, again, you can't even accept yourself. You made it there and you couldn't accept yourself at that point because of Christian guilt. By the way, I'm not psychoanalyzing. This is what she has admitted on her own timeline, on her own Twitter. We just looked at it just a little bit ago. Go back and look at the tweet. She said it's because she's a sinner. She, it's Christianity that is preventing her. She was happy living as a guy, but she couldn't accept herself because of her Christian ideology. Finally have expressed your true inner self or whatever, the thing that you wanted to do so badly ever since you were like 13, 14 years old. You did this thing to alleviate this gender dysphoria, you know, that wasn't there before, but you made it into a problem and now your body image issues are worse. That's not supposed to happen. What do we do now? I just woke up one day, looked at myself in the mirror, and ask myself, what the heck am I doing? As I realized, no matter if I would have gone every surgery, continue with hormones, I realized I would have never been a woman. At best, I would have been a caricature of what I believed a woman was. Isn't it, now this is for my community explicitly, isn't it wild how the rhetoric that these people are using, that these detransitioners are using is the...
exact same rhetoric that we see among like self-hating trans people and the Blanchardist people, this hyper trans medicalist, this is the exact, exact same talking points and neuroses. It's almost like um, these people were extremely happy at the progress that they made, but that there was a society, there was people, not even society, there were people around them that were constantly invalidating them, that there was a milieu that they existed in that was undercutting them and not and refusing to support them. In the case of this guy, this guy specifically, his father abused him specifically for being trans. Don't you feel like that is fairly important to this? Nobody would help me because they had more concerns of me reversing everything. I just socially detransitioned, got the implants removed. So I had technically developed gynecomastia. Cryptid Cassie says, my first thought is of these ex-gay testimonials back in the day. Oh yeah, the mirrors are, uh, th this is identical. The current anti-trans movement is almost identical to the, to the anti-gay movement all the way down to the ex-homosexuals um, who uh, insist that they're so much happier now that they just repress. Yeah, wild. My chest is not like it used to be, and it never will. I have scarring, numbness, and unfortunately, my nipples are completely different, eh, to put it lightly has been taking a major toll on me since I realized what I've done. I was almost five years on testosterone. So if I had gone further, I, I wouldn't have been able to go back. Five years. This person was on testosterone for five years and they want you to think that, that these people are exemplars of like being rushed through a system. These are adults who made decisions and who are now trying to blame other trans people and damage other trans people for decisions they made as adults. None of the people depicted in this film were pressured in any way. None of them. Daisy never once showed any evidence of being pressured. Oh, wait, sorry, let me revise that. They were never pressured to be trans. There was some pressure. One of them was abused explicitly for being trans by being forced into, uh, into, a, into, into having sex against their will. Interesting that. Interesting that both of these people transitioned as adults. Neither of them were fast-tracked. One of them was on hormones for five years. The other one lived as a woman for a, per, a long period of time and yet this is supposed the message of this is supposed to be somehow that gender affirming care is the dangerous part and not that these people have other issues that they're dealing with that are completely independent of their being trans as it turns out trans people can have trouble trans people can make bad decisions trans people can do other things but why is this message being projected against all trans people i don't regret my transition i live in a household of people who do not regret their transition and yet somehow this all of this first of all there's a, a load of lies in here but then the people that they bring on as their main examples don't even match the the message that the the film is saying that in the summary of the film in the express narrative of the film there's supposed to be some kind of uh super like you know fast tracking process that is being targeted at young people and these are people who chose as adults to do these things it's wild it's almost like this entire film is a deeply manipulative and misleading propaganda film designed to garner hate against trans people, hate and distrust and fear. When I found out I was pregnant, I was just over the moon. I mean, I I was scared. Also, a small fact check here. Uh, trans men get pregnant on T 
frequently. And also, many trans men who do struggle with fertility are have been able to. Uh, it has been demonstrated over and over again that you can pause testosterone in order to have a child if you so desire it. And that can be done safely for both the father and the child. That's just well known. Every, everyone in trans communities knows this, and most medical professionals know this as well. I was going to have a doctor tell me that, like, sorry, you're infertile, and it would have been my fault. There are so many young people who are going through very similar things that I did and are still being told that transition will save them. And it's just not true. My this is the this is the absurd narcissism of this. The entire first half of this was them showing examples of people being happy in their transition. And this one person who isn't happy with her transition and also isn't happy with her detransition because she's a filthy sinner um, and believes everyone needs to be Catholic. But because of that, apparently no person should be allowed to transition. Unbelievable narcissism. This is exactly what I'm talking about, by the way, when I say that this doesn't help real detransitioners. These are fake detransitioners. And I don't mean that uh, they aren't real people. Like, Daisy is a real person. And did they, what, what was the name? I, I literally missed the name of the other person in this video. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Both of them are, they're real people, but they're not representative of detransitioners. They don't represent the real experience of most people who detransition. And both of them have been created by PragerU. They've been taken advantage of by PragerU and perhaps also made some money from it. I'm going to guess that they were both probably paid for this. Um, maybe they weren't, but I have a feeling they were paid probably a large sum for being in this movie. Um... Uh, but they have been made by PragerU into a narrative to be weaponized against all trans people, including detran real detransitioners, real people who have real problems that they're trying to deal with. Most detransitioner stories don't look anything like this, not even close. And most detransitioners certainly uh, don't go on to get paid by PragerU to be in a documentary. Um, most detransitioners detransition because they are forced to. The, the majority of all evidence points towards this. Again, if you don't believe me, I go into full details with citations in my detransitioner video, which you can check out on my channel. You should subscribe to my channel, by the way, down below. Press that subscribe button down below so you can catch my other videos. And of course, if you've been enjoying this, you should leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I want to hear it. Like the stream too, or the video if you're watching it in the future. Let's continue. The story is tragic in some ways, but it's very redemptive in many ways. That cannot be said for many detransitioners. And that's just heartbreaking. Like, I can't imagine living with that. Like, you are the problem. Like, no joke, you are the problem. The reason why um, detransitioners have a bad name, which they don't really. In the trans community, uh, almost everyone knows somebody who has had to detransition. Like I said, usually against their will, um, almost everyone knows someone. Almost every trans person I've ever met knows somebody who's had to detransition, and there is no hate, ire, dislike, distrust towards these people. It is only towards people like yourself, Ollie London, all of these other detransition grifters. The detransition grifters aren't received well by the trans community because you're trying to stop the trans community from being able to live their lives. Because you're actively going out and saying everyone should be a Catholic and I personally believe that no one should be legally allowed to transition. That's the shit that you people say. That's why you aren't accepted anymore. Because you are fighting against the trans community because you are contributing to organizations like PragerU, pushing anti-trans propaganda out there. Detransitioners, real detransitioners, actually do just fine in the trans community. And in fact, there is much love, support, backing, um, di literally direct aid available to them. The trans community is totally supportive of detransitioners. 
just not detransitioned grifters. I can't imagine what it would be like to regret a bottom surgery or, you know, to, to be infertile because when you were a, a little child, like 12, your, you know, parents were manipulated into... Yep, and as Alora says, all detransitioners are welcome here in the Demon Mama community. We've got your back. Of course we do. No questions asked. We support anyone who's had to ha experience detransition. Though we do not support detransition grifters like these people. We don't support detransition grifters like Ollie London. We don't de support detransition uh, a giga Catholic evangelists like Daisy. We don't do that, but we do support all detransitioners. None of the frauds, though. Get the frauds out. None of these, none of these fake detransitioners. I was going to make an edgy joke, but we're done. Putting you, like, blocking your puberty. Being so young, I was so impressionable. I was told so many times, it's possible that you're trans, it's possible that you're trans, that eventually I started to believe it. Unfortunately, transition made things worse for me. It's possible that you're trans, it's possible that you're trans. Oh my god, what a, what a, what a, what a, what a dominating message. Hey, it's possible that you're trans. Hey, it's possible you're trans. And then I started believing it was possible that I could be trans. <gasps> oh! It has just kind of wrecked my perception of myself, and I feel like I missed out on like three years of my life. Okay. I missed out on three years of living my teenage girlhood. I didn't realize... Okay. ...that there were women like me who were different. So, here's the deal. I'm detransitioning. It's true. It's not a joke. I understand now that I can be a cis woman again i haven't gone too far i haven't passed the point of no return i can live as a woman again i was something because people were reacting to me but it was a me that wasn't really me so i was protected i was protecting my it's crazy it's really funny to me that like that anti-trans people are constantly like these people are confused they don't know if they're a man or a woman and then you listen to the detransitioners that they've put in their documentaries and they're like uh it was the me that wasn't really me it wasn't the true me but it was the true me maybe but i don't know it's like they're the they're the confused ones incredible myself with the trans label these pediatric clinics that perform these surgeries they will do nothing to help these teens if they decide to detransition. There's nothing you can do. You know, once you've taken all- In Imagine featuring serial grifter and complete fraud Ollie London. Oh man, what a decision. Just, just for those who don't know, the person who was just shown on screen is, nothing Ollie, you can is Ollie London. Ollie London uh, went on a detransition grift where they blamed the trans community for their surgical obsession. But it turns out that, um, hot take, um, their, tra their surgical obsession was not about being trans. Their surgical obsession was them getting surgeries so that they could look like Jimin from BTS. Now, um, yeah. So, um. Oh yeah, this is from the Christian Bible Network. Yeah, of course. But um, yeah, they 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 obsessively pursued surgeries so that they could look like a Korean person, like a Korean idol, sp a specific person, not just a Korean person generally. They wanted to look like another person, and then they also transitioned later, and then they detransitioned, and then they went on a grift on a uh, you know making money, going on as many sh conservative shows as they could blaming their surgical obsession on the trans community when their surgical obsession was actually about making themselves look like a famous Korean musician. You think there might be something else going on there other than being trans? You think that maybe the obsession to get hundreds, or what was it, dozens, not hundreds, dozens of surgeries to make yourself look like a famous Korean person to make yourself look like somebody else who's famous so you have a parasocial relationship you think maybe that might be a little more impactful i i think so personally i don't know maybe it's a hot take but i think so
So, you know, once you've taken all those hormones, Billy, your body is changed beyond repair. You don't have to remove your- Also, flatly false. Um, uh, hormones are, um, largely reversible, uh, especially within the first year. Um, very few changes from hormones are completely, um, are irreversible. And in fact, if you think about that, it actually kind of, it's kind of self-evident. Why, if hormones weren't reversible, how would taking hormones change anything in the first place? If you are assigned male at birth and you go through male puberty and hormones aren't reversible, then wouldn't taking estrogen do nothing? But it does. And that's because hormones are reversible. Hormones change your body based on what hormone is present. And yes, there are some things that are more difficult to change than others. Um, certain bone shapes that are formed during puberty when your bones are still developing um, can be a little bit hard to change. Um, but most most of the effects of hormones, especially within the first year, are completely reversible. Um, yeah. Your body parts to make you complete. When I transitioned, my suicidal ideation did not go away. Transition is... Yeah, exactly. Wait a second. First of her points out they literally disproved this earlier in the video when um when Daisy says that she was on T for five years and then went off T and was able to get give, give birth. And also, I'm sorry, but um can we be completely real here? Whereas where's fault. There are so sorry, many this save is, them. Wait, and this is what transition This is what Daisy looks like after five years of T and then desisting and going off of HRT. Uh, I'm sorry, but I gotta say, that seems pretty reversible. Um, yeah. Sorry, just seems pretty, all those hormones, Billy. seems pretty reversible to me. Your body is- Man, this is such a- this is such a lazy documentary. This shit is- the fact that this works on people is so depressing. It actually makes me, uh, it actually makes me kind of hermit-pilled, you know? It, it kind of does. Like, it makes me go, wow, the fact that, like, there is a portion of the population that will watch this and be totally convinced, even though it is the most shoddily produced, self-contradictory self thing. And the reality, of course, is because it's appealing to pre-existing biases. This is not a, a truth-seeking documentary. It's meant to inflame and worsen pre-existing prejudices. That's what this is designed to do. Anyway, let's continue. Change beyond repair. You don't have to remove your body parts to make you complete. When I transitioned, my suicidal ideation did not go away. Transition is not the only answer, and there are many detransitioners like me out there. My name is Camille Kiefel. My name is Emily. My name is Laura Becker. My name is Abel Garcia, and I am a detransitioner. My name is Daisy, and I am a woman. Wow. Remember, remember, co compare that to the shot of the top surgery. And I'm also, I want to see, I want this clip. I want this clip of the, I'm a detransitioner. My name is Daisy. And I am a woman. I want this with the, with the, the tweet up here of Daisy saying, I still date, I still dream about myself as a man multiple times a week. I can't stop thinking about it. Only Jesus Christ can save me now. Yikes. Yikes. And there you go. There's the thing at the end, the, the, peti the Prager U petition. Okay, I'm actually kind of impressed. This doesn't have as many views as I thought it would. It's... Wait, this has been out since October 25th? And this came out on October 25th and it only has 137,000 views. I think part of it is because, um... Honestly, it's a very, very clumsy propaganda piece. Um... They undercut themselves with their own guests. They should have just, if they were really, if they were smart propagandists, they would have paid actors to represent other trans people, and then they would have basically scripted the entire thing. 
they would have said actor portrayal or something like that at the beginning and not had these people actually come on because both of the detransitioners that they had on contradicted their narrative. Both of them didn't get fast-tracked. Both of them took a really long time and both of them expressed extreme agency. Um, it wasn't the trans community that controlled them or pressured them or anything. Neither of them even had examples of that. And um, Abel, I think, was the guy, was the 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 D the MTF detransitioner. Abel, um, the only example of of extreme pressure that was received was their conservative father sexually abusing them. Was the only example that they had, and that's just a massive undercutting to the message of this of this documentary. Um, I, I feel like anybody who isn't already completely lost in the sauce is going to see this documentary and go, wow, that's actually really fucked up. It actually kind of seems like the conservatives are the ones that are doing the damage here. The fact that it's like their families that were hurting them and not trans people, that all of the depictions of trans people besides them is basically um, trans people being happy and thriving. Um, and then they have some random yuck yuck from the uh, from the fucking uh, Manhattan Institute show up to be like, yeah, um, actually, um, basically they're shooting they're shooting hormones into your mouth with those t-shirt guns from the baseball games. It's uh, it's like you know, it's like a Pez dispenser with HRT and surgeries. You go into a thing, uh, you go and you go into the corner store, and they're selling you a, a free penis, and it's just like, dude, what? What a, what a mess. What an absolute mess of a documentary. Constant, constant contradiction. Uh, uh, yeah, pathetic, honestly. I, I, I know that this might seem like a hot take, but I don't think that this is actually going to um, like spark a wave of transphobia um, in like cis people. I don't actually think that most cis people are gonna give a shit about this because first of all, most cis people have no fucking clue what a detransition even is. Um, even the conservatives, even the, the, the like culture war addled conservatives are too stupid to actually realize what it is they're like looking at. And that's kind of, look at this, I'm serious. It's been out since October 25th and it only has 137,000 views. That's like worse than most PragerU YouTube videos. That's like shockingly bad, actually. That's a very low view count. And keep in mind, that's with people like myself going and deliberately reacting to it. Um, yeah. Um, and, and also they, they promoted the fuck out of this on Twitter, which means that their, their promotion on Twitter failed. They spent a million dollars in advertising on Twitter to get one, that 137,000 views. That's if I spent a million dollars on advertising, I would, I would be the next most famous. I would be the next Mr. Beast. Are you kidding me? Getting 137,000 views. That's like a, that's like a, that's less than like a, of like a like a mildly popular Vosh video. One million dollars for a hundred and thirty thousand views. Oof. Okay, one thing I will say though, I know who this will torture. This is going to torture um tra uh conservative trans people. Conservative trans people are gonna watch this video and are gonna feel like they wanna die. So basically I can't help but feel like this is kind of a PragerU self-purge. That I don't know if they intended to do it, but that this is going to like all of the conservative uh, trans people, which of which there are not many, but there are some, they're going to watch this and they're going to all be miserable. And they're all going to feel like they need to do what, all, all, what Daisy did. Yeah. Blair White, I don't even know. I don't even know if Blair White, uh, like, cares. Yeah. That's like seven, $7.50 $7 of view. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. How many views did Vosh get on his channel reviewing this? Let's go find out. That's, that's a good... That would be amazing, honestly. But, okay, keep in mind. Hold on. Let's, let's find out. Hold on. 
He was on his main channel for sure, right? He got 70,000 views. Holy shit, in 10 hours, Vosh got half as many views as they've gotten since the 25th of October. That's actually really encouraging. That's actually awesome. Okay, I want you guys, you guys better make sure that my review, my reaction to this gets some views. By the way, if you're here and you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, and share this video. This video, I know that with the power of the imps, with the power of the hellfire of Demon Mama, we can get this video out there. My reaction has been poggers. This video was a sad embarrassment. Um, it failed to deliver its message. All that it did was the most baseline appeals to prejudice. And, uh, they spent a million dollars to get 1.3, or sorry, 137.9 thousand views. That's actually pretty sad. Um, and I consider that to be a victory. The only thing that I think we need to keep in mind, of course, with this is that, um, is that Prager U, and I think this is the important takeaway, Prager U is trying to build a silo. Um, a number of other um, conservative organizations are currently trying to do this as well, where basically what they're trying to do is, um, is bring people in from YouTube and get them into their uh, ecosystem on their own website. Uh, the reason why this was posted only on their website and not on YouTube and elsewhere is because they want to funnel people into their homepage where they can continually be fed more PragerU, more conservative propaganda, recommendations to the Daily Wire, recommendations to the Blaze TV, recommendations to other Christian websites. Um, it's a, a pretty sinister thing, but it's not new. This is what um, this is what uh, Christian media has always done. Have you guys ever heard about like Christian radio? where there's radio stations that only play Christian music and they only talk about Christian stuff and they only recommend other Christian things because they are completely siloed off from the world. Um, the, the, the far right has always done this, but they're starting it up again. Um, and part of the reason why they're having to push this so hard is because they lost their big boy. Rush Limbaugh was the most successful conservative to do this since the, like, since like since like the christian uh uh you know the christian american revival movement um you rush limbaugh was the most popular radio political radio show in the world he might i think he might have been the most popular single radio show in the entire world and he was exclusively conservative and exclusively recommended conservative stations that were within his own network he built an ecosystem that was purely controlled by him and his associates no one else was allowed in it, his shows would promote other partners of his friends, other conservatives, uh, to push a specific agenda. And he's dead. He's gone. And there's been nobody really been able to step up and replace it. But they're trying. They're certainly trying. They're certainly trying to build um, these uh, siloed off ecosystems where you pull people in and then feed them nonstop political propaganda like what we just watched. Anyway, um, yeah, what a wild ride, a lot of misinformation, and again, I'm going to recommend, if you found this interesting, go to my channel and go check out my detransition video, um, in which I talk about my own experience of detransition. It will be the video posted just before this one, so if you go to the channel, and you go to my uploads, look at the last video before this one, and it will be that one. That's, of course, if you didn't catch me live on DemonMama.com. If you caught me live, you already saw it because you are an awesome live viewer. And I'd love to have you for future live streams. Anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for being an imp. And make sure that you're subscribed to Demon Mama.